we're working on making fusion temperatures in excess of 100 million degrees. To put that into perspective, free-flowing lava from a volcano is at about 1100 degrees, and even the center of our sun is at 15 million degrees. So the temperatures in a tokamak at over 100 million degrees are some of the highest in our solar system. So people designing fusion devices need to be able to deal with high levels of heat. They do this by incorporating something called a diverter. We are designing and installing a diverter in ST40. So far it has been operated with circular plasmas in what's known as a limited configuration. A diverted configuration will allow us to reach higher performance. All the heat that escapes the plasma or most of the heat is diverted to a special region known as the diverter. So in uh, spherical tokamaks, we can have two diverters, one at the top and one at the bottom. So that spreads the heat load by around a half. So any power that leaves the plasma enters a special region known as the scrape off layer. And this is a very narrow band of open field lines at the edge of the plasma that we can direct towards the diverter. So in the diverter, we can handle these very high heat loads. And it also separates the plasma material interactions from the main plasma. So any sputtering or any impurities that come off the diverter when it's uh, exposed to these high heat loads don't enter the plasma and that allows us to keep the plasma very pure and get high performance. I'm Daniel Iglesias, I'm the diver team leader. The diver is the exhaust system, is what we use to get out of the plasma what we don't want to be there. The process in which we do it is we crush all those energetic particles into, into surface in a constant basis. Those particles lose their energy. The particles that have uh, reached the, the surfaces will eventually come out much colder. In principle, you want to remove those particles as quick as possible. So we have dedicated high-performing vacuum systems close to that surface, which trap those, those particles. And after trapping those, uh, we need to process and separate the isotopes of the hydrogen that we want to recycle and put back into the chamber, especially the tritium. So this is a cross-section of SD40. This is the uh, new configuration. That, so all the vessel, it's completely new. And we got a diverter arrangement here in the bottom and a symmetrical arrangement in the top. What we can see here in blue is the core plasma. And in red would be the scrape off layer. You can see that it's very thin in this area where the particles are uh, getting outside of the, of the plasma. And then those particles we get diverted down here to this low field side. So this plate is the one that needs to, to cope with, the, with most of the, of the heat. The amount of power that is exhausted by the plasma is, it depends really on how much uh, we're heating the plasma. So that all that power will come to the diverter if we can use more area of the diverter, then that power gets spread and the peak of the, of the power is much lower. On future tokamaks, the diverter will become an increasingly important design consideration as the heat loads will rise dramatically. The main challenge of, of designing a diverter, which is at the end of an exhaust system, is coping with oh, this huge amount of uh, heat flux density. Uh, which comes in a very narrow channel and, and it produces peaks of on the order of megawatts per square meter. In the machines that we are operating now we can bring it up to 20 or 30 megawatts per square meter. The heat flux is one challenge of it, but because so many particles will arrive, especially the ions have a lot of uh, kinetic energy, then they're going to impact the surface. Of the, of the diverter and the, there are a lot of uh, interactions going on and at the end the, they will erode the, that surface and will degrade the, the, the performance of the, of the diverter. Another challenge is plasma disruptions where the plasma destabilizes and touches the inner walls of the tokamak. Yeah, so sometimes uh, we do get events called disruptions. This can be a problem but we can design special regions known as limiters. They're like bumpers, so there are places that we want to deposit either voluntarily or accidentally a lot of energy. We can see if the tokamak was a car, this would be the, the bumper. So you'd have a special region in the tokamak where if the plasma does hit it, it can either be a sacrificial region or you'd have a place that can handle higher heat loads than the rest of the wall. So in SD40, we have special tiles on the centre column that are made of carbon. 
and these can kind of handle higher heat loads. So if the plasma hits the carbon, it cools down very quickly because some impurities get sputtered out and that causes the plasma to radiate away and it also stops us damaging the vessel. And especially they're going to protect the very fragile bits of uh, diagnostic equipment. With the use of diverters, limiters and sacrificial regions inside the tokamak, we can reduce the impact of high heat loads and plasma disruptions and manage the extreme temperatures inside the plasma.